issues around power, the abuse of power, having authority, abusing authority, Many people on the spiritual path have a lot of baggage around this. You know, people uh, in prison uh, it's perhaps an overly simplistic model, but many people categorize uh, prisoners into uh, three different categories. One is uh, someone that just uh, took a calculated risk. They knew there was a risk of getting caught. They got caught, they'll do the time, and then they make the most of the experience of being incarcerated. They usually seriously apply themselves to learning at the expense of the, of the government. And they're normally learning to acquire skills which will actually improve their efficacy as a criminal, as a career criminal. And uh, then there's those who suffer enormously during incarceration. And there's two different types of people who suffer when they're experiencing the consequences of their actions. There's those who genuinely feel a lot of guilt around what they've done. But that's the, very, that's the, smaller, uh, the smaller category. Uh, the larger category is those who are overwhelmed with remorse at being caught for what they've done. So if you really want to let go of the sort of baggage that comes from experiencing the consequences of your actions, that baggage is going to be all about guilt and remorse. Um, the, the key to releasing that is the transformation, the transmutation of remorse and the way that you begin the transmutation of remorse is to purify the motivation for the remorse. Being very, very sorry that you got caught and that you are suffering the consequences of getting caught, the consequences of your actions, uh, is not a pure motive. And um, I'm sorry, but most of you, uh, not just here, but most of you who would watch this video will have issues around hanging on to the past because you have uh, a lot of remorse around being caught. You have a lot of remorse about having to now suffer the consequences of your actions when you were in a position of authority, when you did have certain power. Uh, the first thing that you have to do is sort that out. Now, some of you are experiencing the consequences of the unwise use of power, the misuse of power in this lifetime in a way that you are occultly shut down you have memories of having a lot of magical sort of powers and now you don't and you miss that you wish you had that and that's the other orientation of remorse uh, you can have this uh, situation where you are deeply 
saddened by your unwise action and the harm that you've caused or you can be deeply saddened by the loss of ability uh, the loss of prowess deeply saddened by being much less of an adept an adept because of your actions so you need to be clear about the orientation there as well and some of you will be much more lamenting because so this is really the dynamics of lamentation so we'll be lamenting because of the feelings now of not being able to make the difference in the world that you want and you wish you had your powers back and some of you will just be deeply saddened by this experience of having caused harm uh, you project that, you, you transfer that into uh, the experience of, well, I can't trust spirit, I can't trust creative source, can't trust universal intelligence, which of course is complete egoic nonsense because it's all about you can't, don't feel that you can trust yourself, uh, rather than just honestly experience those feelings uh, about your yourself as a human spirit journeying through eternity you tend to transfer and blame and make it about the universe make it about creative source you know it's like well I was partnering with creative source and I screwed up and I made or did all this harm and now I'm suffering the consequences and so it must have been creative sources fault because I, all I was doing was following instructions. There's a lot of that sort of nonsense tied up with uh, issues around spiritual power. What the world needs most now is for people to be really plugged in to the universal consciousness and to be in the beginnings of their journey in their own right as far as the cosmic experience is concerned to step into leadership this is what the, the world needs there the other element of uh, a reluctance and unwillingness to step into spiritual leadership which involves spiritual power is uh, a lot of projection by those who believe they own the planet, who put a lot of propaganda out there into mass consciousness, which is deliberately designed to cause fallen spiritual initiates um, to feel exactly as many of you have described this afternoon. So one also needs to set very firm boundaries and to ensure that you are not being influenced and impacted upon by those who seek to keep the corridors of leadership and the corridors of power free of those who are genuinely operating out of spiritualized ideals and who want to lead out of love and compassion and generosity of spirit, the true spirit of goodwill. So it's important that you make sure that you are not being influenced by those forces on the planet who uh, very pleased that there are so few high level spiritual initiates in positions of leadership and power upon the planet so one needs to be really honest with oneself about why one feels the way that they do. If you're having trouble letting go of issues around stepping into spiritual leadership in a big way, it's because your understanding, your perception, your bias around the consequences that you are currently experiencing are wrong plain and simple wrong you must purify the motivation 
for the remorse and the lamentation, which are the two dynamics which cause you to hang on to the past. And you must become comfortable with the fact that your current circumstances are completely 100% just, right and appropriate. Cause and effect is immutable. There are consequences to how you choose to use your energy. There is an effect to every cause and your current circumstances are not unjust in any way. You must trust in the immutable outplay of cause and effect and truly make peace with that understanding that your current circumstances are entirely your creation. Entirely your creation. Certainly some of that creation is the result of not choosing when you had the opportunity to choose and letting others choose for you and then getting swept up and moved along when you could have exercised choice. But that too is a choice. The choice to not choose. So there's a few things there that you need to sort out. You need to be accepting, truly accepting of your current circumstances and you may be able to intellectualize the whole thing but it must be resolved on a feeling level. Now if you have a very 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 clear sense that in other embodiments you have had uh, the experience of being in high level spiritual leadership with the powers, the abilities, the ascension abilities and gifts which come from that. If you have had experience where you just know so clearly that you have had that in other lifetimes and you now do not, there is but one cause for that. You've been naughty. A good place to start is to really attune to the Universal Mother, to Creative Source, and deeply apologize for being naughty. It is very true, this is one of the things that Orthodox religion has right. The path to salvation from the limitation of the past is through contrition. That is true. If you are feeling yourself to be in a situation of smallness, of contraction, which no amount of your own choosing will relinquish, cause you to be able to move beyond, if you feel that you are confined, if you are shut down in some way. In spiritual terms, in spiritual terms, in evolutionary terms, that is because you have evolved into a position of power and authority and not wielded that power and that authority wisely. That means that you have indeed caused harm. The evolutionary forces will not allow you to move back into any position of spiritual leadership which involves power in evolutionary terms until you are 
contrite, truly, truly sorry for the harm that you have caused um, in a way which is not about hanging on to the past, in a way which is not about beating yourself up for the past, but to truly just acknowledge the path that you have placed, played in causing harm. And once you actually reach that point, not that you are truly, truly, truly sorry that you got caught and are now suffering the consequences, but just, wow, okay. I, I, I just acknowledge and I accept that I have acted unwisely. And I'd like another chance. As soon as you enter into that relationship with creative source, in true spiritual contrition, you will be then given the opportunity to retrace your steps and to move back into leadership to regain, to reclaim, to once again become the adept. As some of you find a certain intelligence that you remember is no longer available to you. Some of it is more like magical powers and abilities to be able to utilize prophecy and a whole lot of other things. Some of you are actually experiencing the karmic consequences as far as physical, physical karma, you know, for being naughty. Some of you are experiencing being shut down emotionally because you've used hypnotism and mesmerism and, you know, some of the, the high-end emotional abilities in order to control other people, not for the highest good, but for your own selfish ends. Some of you find yourself shut down intellectually because you've used the mind in a way which was unwise and about power and control over others, which wasn't for the highest good. In order to recover from that, one must be in that space of contrition and one must be 100% willing to clean up their mess. So that's the wonderful thing about a free will universe. Whoever makes the mess cleans up the mess. So if you find yourself unable to move forward, there uh, inevitably will be a mess. And I've spoken about, you know, these people who do these psychic readings and for a living and they're just constantly reflecting the person's desire life back to them, causing them to be dependent, causing them to not take responsibility for their life. You know, everyone that you cause to be dependent on you, Everyone that you take power away from as far as their own ability to be self-determining in, in, in the spiritual sense, you become responsible for the restoration of their spiritual autonomy at some point. So, you know, some people when they're in prison, they just go, you know, I'm a bit over living my life this way. I do want to you know, go straight. I do want to, I, I want to do it different. I really do. And they set their mind and their heart to changing, to re-educating themselves, to changing their motivation, to learning how to relate with life in a different way, to co-create with elements of life in a different way. And they do transform their life and they, in so doing, change their destiny. Most people who are on the spiritual path at this point in the early 21st century, given that there has been an ascension window of opportunity open since 1994, if you have not soared to return 
to be transfigured in spiritual terms and have not had many of your gifts and abilities returned. It is because you are hanging on to the past and in the past you have been naughty in spiritual terms. Not in a hellfire and brimstone or self-righteous, right and wrong, good and evil kind of way. There's just choices and consequences. And if you claim spiritual power in evolutionary terms and then you cause harm, which means that you don't cause evolution, you cause de-evolution in some way, you are responsible for making that right. So it's about partnering with the spiritual forces of evolution and being willing to work off your debt in spiritual service. You don't have to work off the debt before you start, but you must be in that true space of contrition and fully and completely in acceptance and acknowledgement of your own misuse of power and be willing to say, Mother, Father, God, creative source, I want another go. I'm going to have another go. And to make sure this time that I'm truly ready to step into spiritual leadership, I'm going to really apply myself to learning my lessons in the process of undoing the harm I have caused. So you can't say to Creative Source, please release me from the burden I carry because of the harm that I've caused. It doesn't work like that. It's like it has to be, okay, I'm willing to do, to be, to exist in whatever way is necessary for me to undo that harm, to repair that damage in the evolutionary sense and then to co-create and be mentored by the relevant overlighting intelligences of evolution itself into an understanding of how you may undo that harm and as you apply yourself in true humility to undoing that harm so as you move back into spiritual leadership, we'll be sure that you won't repeat those same mistakes again. That's just the way the system works. You know, those who watch what happens, those who make things happen, and those who wonder what the hell happened. If you want to be one that makes things happen, you must be willing to accept the consequences of any unwise choices that you make. The only difference, you've heard me say this many times, the only difference between falling off the bottom rung of the ladder and the top rung of the ladder is that from the top rung there is further to fall. People seem to think that they can do a bit of work on themselves and develop some spiritual authority, some spiritual power and then cease their introspection on a daily basis to ensure that they maintain clarity and purity. They can get to a certain position in spiritual terms and part of the way that they've got there is to transcend the cert certain temptations which are involved with the pull of matter. And they can get to a certain point where they move into spiritual authority move into spiritual leadership and then they can behave in a way which is spiritually deplorable. Sex with their students to misuse their ability to project energy and to impact upon the evolutionary flows in order to work their own separate will as a human being. These things are spiritually deplorable. No judgment intended. From anyone who has worked themselves into a position of spiritual leadership, such action 
is spiritually deplorable. And there are serious consequences to doing such things. So you must be really willing to accept that if you're shut down, it's because you were naughty. So you must be sorry for being naughty, sorry for acting in a way which was unbecoming to the level of spiritual initiation that you were at. You know, you look at some great spiritual leaders on the planet, like the Dalai Lama, for instance. You know, there's lots of things that the average person does as a matter of course as far as self-abuse, as far as, you know, abusing others. People just do it, perform, people just do as a matter of course. And you would expect the Dalai Lama to not engage in a lot of those activities, those inappropriate activities because at his level of spiritual development and spiritual leadership you know there's this enormous responsibility that comes to set a good example you know so you're not going to see him you know going out and getting drunk and picking up 14 year old girls and having sex with them and you know you would just you would accept that someone at that level is not going to behave in that way. It's not that the temptations would not be there. Because of his position, you know, people would fixate on him and, you know, I'm sure he would have just as many adoring women wanting to throw their panties at him as the average rock star would. But, you know, you, you would just know that that's not something that he's going to have any difficulty dealing with. You know what I mean? So, to see all these people out there that are in positions of spiritual leadership behaving, you know, like, because they're in a position where they're able to have people throwing their panties at them and so they just go, oh well, in the spirit of non-judgment, in the spirit of non-judgment and acceptance of all that is, I will have sex with all of these young girls. And they justify that. This is spiritual abuse. And there should be criminal prosecutions. But, you know, we don't prosecute the, all these bankers who are creating, you know, all these heinous crimes of, of, of financial raping and pillaging of people. So, you know, we don't prosecute the bankers, although in some countries they have started hanging them and putting them in jail forever, but it's certainly in the enlightened West, you know, there, there it no, seems to be no consequences other than promotion for uh, those who commit um, heinous financial crimes. So certainly, you know, the likelihood of someone who is committing spiritual abuse, you know, very likely to, uh, sadly, to get away with it. But even if you get away with, with it as far as there's no magisterial repercussions as far as the law is, con the earthly law is concerned, there is the law of cause and effect. So the reality is that any burdens that you carry as far as being shut down or even, you know, serious physical karma is, is going to be associated with the effects of choices that you have made, the way that you've chosen to act out in the past. Anything that you have lost has not been caused by being struck down by creative source. It's the inevitable result, consequences, of reaching a level of spiritual initiation and then acting in a way which is unbecoming for an initiate of that degree. So just like we know and trust and, and expect the Dalai Lama to not act 
the way the average person acts. And we know to some degree we can calibrate off the Dalai Lama and we can set our bar and we can have a really good example of high level spiritual ethics and so forth from the Dalai Lama. In the past, if you find yourself now having been sent down, it's because you acted in a way which was unbecoming to a spiritual initiate of the degree that which you were at. So contrition, enormously important. A willingness to clean up whatever mess you've made. A willingness to repair any harm which has been caused. is absolutely vital. And the third thing which is necessary, you used to be here as far as spiritual initiation is concerned, now you find yourself down here. You need to start acting in every way, on every level, in every aspect of your life, of your existence you need to act as though you were still at that level. Right? So nothing which is unbecoming to an initiate of that higher level that you seek to return to, are you able to engage with or choose. You cannot lower yourself. You cannot lower your standards. And that's why I say if you want to return to a place where you've been in the past, you must fake it till you make it. So it's not like, well, I'm at this level of spiritual initiation so I can get away with this, 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 this and this. This is where I want to return to, not get to. This is where I want to return to. So you must calibrate your sense of what is unbecoming to a, an initiate of this degree and you must act as though you are already there for a period of time. Even though you can get away with other stuff. Because at a lower level of initiation you can get away with stuff without falling. You need to act as though you are back there. So those three things are necessary and only you can do that. Only you can be that. So if you can relate with the Dalai Lama thing. It's okay, well, would the Dalai Lama do this? No, well I won't either. You understand? It's that simple. And orthodox religiosity has tried to turn that into a ritualized dogma without some uh, certain understanding of, of the subtleties of, of, the, of the, the, uh, the causal inferences, let's say. But they've tried to turn it into rituals which work. And that's why some people that apply themselves to these uh, rituals, they actually get quite good results to a certain level and they can't get beyond that because they're placing an intermediary between themselves and, and source. Um, that's why some of this stuff works. But hopefully that I'm giving you a... <clears throat> I don't want you to put religious overtones onto what I'm saying, but I want you to understand as far as the seventh ray ritual aspect is concerned, what is actually necessary to present yourself before the creative father, the creative mother, and go, my bad, whoopsie, bugger. Ah, uh, okay, let's get back on the horse and away we go and, okay. I take full responsibility, full responsibility. Help me to understand my bad. Help me to understand and integrate how not to repeat the same mistakes. I'm very willing to clean up my mess and I'm going to act as though 
I am at a much higher level of initiation than I actually am. Nothing will impress upstairs as much as that. Get what I mean? In contemplating that, do you get a sense of hope beyond the moment? That's because it'll work. And so all you have to do is do it. And I'll even say to upstairs, hey, look, these people, they're going to have a go. Keep a close eye on them. Encourage them. And you'll be surprised how quickly you can regain. It, it's not going to be weeks, but it could be months. You actually start to feel that you're being trusted. Because part of the way that you feel, when, if you have this sense that you've been at a high level of initiation and now you're operating at a lower level, you do feel a bit foolish. You can feel a little bit chastised by upstairs. And you can feel that, you know, a little bit like you're being treated like a child by upstairs. Rightly bloody so. <laughs> if you were upstairs, that's prob exactly the way that you would approach. And always willing to, to assist those who have fallen to regain their former spiritual position. Uh, however, you know, you have to meet a certain criteria. You have to demonstrate that you've, 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 you've learnt the error of your ways. And you're coming from that in a space of true humility rather than, ah, I'm just going to wait this out and then I'm going to get back there. You know, I'm going to intellectualise it away. Just go, I made a mess of things. I might have had the best of intentions, but, you know, like they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and I've made a mess of things. How do I know I've made a mess of things? Because I'm where I'm at, <laughs> and I'm not still at this much higher level of spiritual initiation. So what am I going to do about it? Okay, well, I'm going to accept that I've made a mess of things. I'm going to clean up my mess, and I'm going to really raise the bar. Okay, I'm not just going to scoot along in life and maintain the standards that are necessary for me to maintain the level of enlightenment and initiation that I've achieved as I've clambered my way back in this lifetime. I'm going to come to the, uh, the best understanding, the greatest understanding that I can come out, uh, come to within myself of, of what it is to be that high level spiritual leader, to be that shining example and I'm going to live and act to the best of my ability as though I'm already there. Unless you do those things, you will never recover. And you have an eternity to wallow. Or, as I was describing what's necessary, uh, you feel that hope, that's because, wow, okay, I can do that, and then I can free myself of this self-imposed limitation. It's not imposed by upstairs, it's imposed by you. Because you are still acting in a way which is unbecoming to a spiritual initiate at the level that you want to be. That's why you have not returned to that level. It's that simple. So you have the power. But there's a lot of propaganda out there and a lot of misinformation which is deliberately being disseminated by those who don't want the high level spiritual leaders to return to be that major influence in the world. That's it. Oh, it's great. I'm so excited. So how does that cause you to feel? 
Great. Optimistic. Great. Grateful. That's the genuine, you know, experience of healing. Is you know, you feel, oh, hope where there was no hope, where you felt really downtrodden and despondent. So that's. And some simple steps to create a sort of a pathway, achievement pathway. Fantastic, fantastic, and it will be a great pleasure for me to walk alongside you as you reclaim that power, that spiritual authority, and lead by example.